Deeper that's gonna song. be a weird one because it's not enough to like really give an indicator on what it is. I mean, I think if you've seen Super Crooks, you'll pretty quickly all, understand all what the fuck is going people. on. All ten, all ten people who've watched yeah. Netflix is Super Crooks. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine a lot of people are gonna it's watch that show. It's not gonna appeal to a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, lots of people try shit just because it's on Netflix. That's true. Boink. <laughs> But wait, there's more. Hey. This is the first monster I've had in probably two or three months. Yeah, host been trying to quit him. I've slowed down with the monsters. You haven't hopefully. tried as hard. Well, that's yeah, okay. just something about monsters is like if I have a really shitty work day of exhaustion, then it's just the best thing in the world to drink afterwards. <laughs> And so it'll always be like workday exhaustion that sends me back to it. But then the next day it's like, oh, I'm addicted. Get another one. <laughs> I don't know. Well, they're always doing the buy three or buy two get one free. Yeah, so now we have so you an always have a spare, fridge. and then they keep you know keep reeling you in, feeding the addiction. Okay, what were we doing? We beat this guy. Um. Oh yeah, I was gonna grind blood vials, which I'm now wasting. Haphazardly. Nice. We didn't beat Father Gascoigne, right? No, yeah, we have not we, beat We're out of Gascoigne. bullets and we're out of blood vials. Jesus Hell Christ. yeah, dude. What a way to start. Exactly how you want to start playing Bloodborne after you haven't played it for three months. I guess that'll that'll let me get warmed up. Yeah. Anywho, welcome back to Vic and Hope. Um, I would say it's been a while, but... I mean, it but, has. But I haven't uploaded the previous one... The previous video to this, which means that for the audience, you to know, current day Vic and yes, Hope, to, it to has current day us, because if if you haven't noticed, <laughs> oh yeah, I, don't know, I might have to, I might have to if it somehow flew these. under your radar, yeah, that we haven't posted anything, but we did months. record some episodes months ago, which I now have, like I have to put them out before we put this out because it doesn't make yeah. any sense if I don't. Meaning this won't come out until like April. Well, no, I'll put them all out one day because <laughs> I I can't I can't not have it all come out at once. Uh, nice. Exhausting. With this fucking idiot fighting with the cinder block. Haha, <laughs> dumbass. He is a I dumb. I have a sword. You a moron. fucking stupid booger man. <laughs> Just a goofy little booger boy fighting with a cinder it's block. A goofy little booger boy. We're playing this in the day, <laughs> and like I've just got the glare of the window behind us on the screen. Let me close the blind. I'm gonna replace my entire wardrobe with just hunter garb from Bloodborne. Yes. <laughs> but you have to be like sexy lady version, bro. No, it's gonna be this. Damn. <laughs> it's gonna be just like this. Yeah. I'll be so warm during the winter. And so goth. It totally goth. Alright. God, how do I play Bloodborne? Okay. Circle. It makes me run. <laughs> yeah. We're okay, let's remember how to play Bloodborne. Poop. Ah! Uh oh. Looks like he. Uh, oh God! He really got the jump on you there, bud. Anywho, yeah. So we haven't been. So hey, it's been a all. couple months. What's yeah. been What's been going on? What explains the lack of content? Well, there's no good explanation <laughs> for the lack of content because I could say, I mean, well. Now we did do a Halloween stream. I should say there's no excuse for the lack of me uploading the ones that we already did, but there is good excuse for us not having made more videos. You know? Yeah, sure. Um, partially because, I mean, it's not a priority, you know, right. <laughs> and it, it shouldn't really be a priority versus other things we are obligated to do. Um, but also like I've been working most weekends. Yeah. Like most, I feel like for the last few months, it's been like one day weekends with me and you together. Yeah. And so if, would we have one day together? We don't usually think, let's do a pick and hoe. Yeah. That's that's true. We've it's kind of little, had limited yeah. uh, limited free days because I've you know me... sometimes I've had extra stuff going on at work or I've had conferences to go to and Vic's been working a lot of weekends. Yeah, it's mostly that I've been doing either music videos or weddings pretty much every weekend because I've scheduled those things around the weekday stuff I do. So it just ends up like every fucking Sunday I'm shooting a stupid music video in Richmond. So there's no time to do any of this stuff. Yeah. 
and there were some good there were some good stretches in like September where I feel like I worked every single day. Like there were yeah. twenty day stretches where I worked every day. Back when I was doing the the TV show. So it's been a yeah, lot. Yeah, you've been staying busy. Yeah. Which is good. Which is good. I'm very busy. I make a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Lots so of money. So the government can take it. Yeah. We did do our Halloween stream, which yeah. everyone remembers. Did uh, our Halloween stream. We got the new Nintendo Switch. <laughs> which follow yeah, up to we that. Fought. So we, we did the stream. Uh, the Switch broke before the stream, and I got the new... I got the Animal Crossing Switch. Because I couldn't get a Switch OLED. And so, the next day, as I kind of theorized, the uh, the old switch works again because I right. let the battery drain out, mm -hmm. and then I, I recharged it, and now it just works. So now I have two working switches, but I kept the, the new switch because the old one obviously has a big problem with its power port, and it can't hook up to a TV, so yeah. there's no real reason Limited for me to, to use it. Switch. So then I feel like I can't really, like, I can't go sell it because it's broken you know like they're gonna test it it'd be like oh well this doesn't work we're not gonna take this i mean i'd have to get it repaired you probably could sell it and they'd refurbish it i think if we went to like video game heaven but then it's like they're gonna give you 50 bucks because they have to refurbish yeah i mean they're it, absolutely know? not gonna give you that much for it but so it's like i might as well just hold on it. to it i still need to transfer all this shit over to the new one yeah so we've though, had Nintendo Switch woes. Yeah, oddly, it's letting me keep my account in the games on both consoles, which mm. I didn't think it was going to let me do. Yeah, that's unusual. It's very odd. Maybe there's, I don't know, couldn't tell you. So then I'm, I'm tempted to give it to uh, Beatrice, mm. my sister. Um, Out of the kindness of your heart. Partially because I'm like, if I can just give it to her with all these games on it, that would be really cool because... And she can play Hades and stuff. But then if it fucks with my account, then I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> because then it's like, it's going to get confusing with like, like the consoles get confused on what save data is on what, because it's like, it's stored in the cloud on your account, but then you have to re-download it to the console. So it's not like actively updating it. Mm -hmm. It's very odd. <laughs> Lala's walking around. Lala's terrifying. like, how do I get back to my, my bed? She's cute. She's quite cute. She's happy we're hanging out in here. Yeah. Lala had a, a lonely weekend because she was home alone mm -hmm. some, so she's hanging out. Yeah. So, hey, we're just past Thanksgiving. We had a nice Thanksgiving. We went and hung out with uh, with B and uh, well, her significant other and Uncle Johnny. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to talk about That's fine. We their... don't have to. We're just, uh, just yeah. making a statement. Yeah. So, we hung out with my Uncle Johnny. Yeah. I haven't seen it in was a long good. time. We had some good food and it was chill. We had a, uh, we accomplished my childhood dream of having a uh, Mexican food Thanksgiving. Yeah, that we was with my your parents, parents and not with uh, Uncle Johnny. You I had was apple just pie about to say <laughs> it was with my parents and my friends that we did the Mexican Thanksgiving. Because when I was like, like ten, I told my my uh, my family that uh, when I was old enough to have my own Thanksgiving, <laughs> I wanted to do uh, Mexican food because I've never been a big fan of Thanksgiving food. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, when I get older, I'm gonna do Mexican food, oh, no. and so uh, this year we we did that with my my parents and some friends, and it was fun. And I tried apple pie for the first time, because my parents yeah. and my family don't really like pie. So somehow I grew up in America having never never tried as apple a, pie as a southern white girl, you know. Yeah. No, I've had pumpkin pie. pie and I've had pecan pie, but I've never I never had I mean, apple pie. The twist is that apple pie isn't really good, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. I think it just seems like something that everyone's. I think tried. apple pie is probably the best if it's like homemade and well, fresh out of the oven. Yeah, it's supposed to be homemade. It's supposed to be fresh, and you're also supposed to have vanilla ice cream with it. Mm -hmm. Like that absolutely changes the experience. Apple pie on its own is not amazing, so it doesn't have a lot of texture to it. But yeah, fresh apples. Well, make I a love big baked apples, too. so I feel like I should really like yeah. apple pie. But you're usually getting one that's that's sat with it for a while, so the apples yeah. are just mush. Maybe next year I'll try and make one. Who knows? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> but then, like, the apple pie crust isn't very good. It's not a, well, at least it's not amazing. Like, I've never had a great apple pie, I should say. I mean, like, like maybe if, you're a, if you're a baker, you could probably make a pretty bomb crust. Because there yeah. are, like, nice flaky pie crusts that I've seen people make. And you're like, damn, that looks great. Oh, he wanted to come with you. Yeah. 
Yeah, drag him around. <laughs> Come on, we're whip, going. Whip, yeah, whip, let's whip, go. Whip, whip, <laughs> whip, 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 whip. Uh, You're coming with uh, me. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, he rolling. Let's see if we can go feed him to the other guys. <laughs> feed him to the doggy. Let's feed him to the doggy. Doggy, we have a snack for you. Come on, doggy. Okay, come get a snack. Come on, doggy. Yeah, then, uh, we can we can really drag him around. We really can. And then we're going to finish off our Thanksgiving trifecta on uh, Sunday by going with my extended family to Bonefish Grill, their favorite restaurant. Uh, he can walk through him. Mm, awesome. That's, that's I unfair. Can, I can trip up the guy with this guy. Yeah. Didn't work out so good. Yeah. He's a, come on, block. Block. I'm blockade. curious. Is uh, if if any like if anyone listening has a, a Hello, restaurant doggies. in their vicinity that is similar to a bonefish grill, it's like an upscale. I mean, it's Applebee's. a national chain, right? Yeah, but other countries and stuff like True. probably don't yeah. have other parts of the other well, parts of America probably don't have bonefish grill. <sighs> it's like an upscale Applebee's that serves seafood. I think it's say, owned I don't by think the people the who own all of people Garden. understand the Applebee's either. But maybe I don't think there's, that's true. Oh, I think maybe there's an Applebee's. I think Germany. Applebee's is a big enough meme that even internationally, you probably have heard of it. Yeah, as long as you're a Homestuck fan. There you go. Yeah. Or was that Olive Garden? That's Olive Garden. Okay. <laughs> no, I think they're probably all owned by the same corporation anyway. I know that probably. Bonefish Grill is owned by the people who own Olive Garden. I know Shit. that for a fact. Naturally. Uh, but anyway, the meme in my family is that my mom is obsessed with Bonefish Grill for no logical reason because it's really not She's anything really into special. Bonefish Grill. Yeah. But she fucking loves it. She gets so excited to go to Bonefish Grill and she thinks that we get really excited to go to Bonefish Grill. Yeah. And it's like, I make better fish at home than Bonefish Grill makes. I think it's like... So, probably like, not, but yeah. There's not a huge availability around here of local seafood places because there's... Well, I've... I've been thinking recently about the uh, the ebb and flow of local scene, yeah, and sort of how like like we had to get to a place where everyone wants to go to chain restaurants. You know, yeah. Our parents' generation grew up with chain restaurants being like the nice place to go. Yeah, you that's know? where you went for a nice family dinner. And like the reason for that, and the reason chain restaurants were able to take over is that like if if local food were always great, no one would have gone to the chain restaurants. Yeah. So it has to start with like, like the local places probably at one point in time were really good and then they get comfortable and they start kind of suck. And so the chains come in and everyone's like, oh, this is really nice. This is so much better than what we could get locally. Because also I guess you should consider in most towns like Virginia Beach, like celebrity, like talented chefs and stuff are going off to bigger cities. Yeah, they're not like, staying here. Back in, you that, know, back yeah. in the old days. So there's probably not a great, a lot of great local restaurants around, which is like a lot of the local chains that are really old suck ass. Like they're terrible, you yeah. know, like the the stuff at the oceanfront and in... in um, Ocean View, where it's like the old seafood restaurants and like OBX and stuff that have been OBX, around forever. OBX. They've been there since the seventies, and they're like generic seafood chains. And uh, but they <laughs> like they're local, but they suck, you know. Right. So for us now, it's like we grew up with the chain restaurants because for our parents' generation, it was like, oh, these are the really good things coming from out of town and offering better food than what the local stuff serves. I think that they probably also offered a level of consistency that a lot of local restaurants couldn't offer. Yeah. So, like, if you think of Bonefish Grill from that perspective, it's like, yeah, it's it's a lot better than, like, the really terrible seafood places you get the oceanfront and stuff that have been for, around forever. And to us, it's really terrible because we go to all these fancy local places with these, like, super talented chefs that come in and, and try to do, like, a... That you really know, curate to, a menu yeah. and try to create, yeah, like, a, a specific kind of dish. So I'm like, there is local seafood that's good, but it's really new places with, you know, younger chefs and they're, they're these little tiny hole in the wall yeah, spots. Yeah, it's always that, a hole like, in the wall. Your parents would have never gone to those, you know, and like their connotation for what that kind of local food would be is like a 70s awful local vibe, you know? Yeah. And not uh, what it is today. So yeah, so Bonefish Grill, from their perspective, is the best seafood. You know, well, I mean, you know, I grew sense. up, I grew up thinking that Olive Garden was fancy. So exactly. you know, that's the mentality. And when you grow up broke and you're like, your average is fast food, and so like, 
that kind of restaurant is like the ooh, we're treating like, ourselves. Ooh, we're going to get Olive Garden. Wow. Yeah. Spending some money on some fancy Italian food tonight, boys. It I'm just... gonna get my buttered noodles and eat so much fucking breadsticks. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah. And now we're lucky enough to live at a time where it's like a lot of the local places we go to to get sandwiches and stuff, they only cost as much as a McDonald's meal, you know? Well, McDonald's like, has gotten so expensive. Yeah, a, those places a, have gotten like, expensive. A meal from McDonald's is like 12 bucks. You're like, all right. And well. Hardee's at all those places. So it's like, <laughs> I could just go somewhere local and get better food, so... Yeah. And it used to be that the local places were more expensive, you know, because they're fancier, I guess. I don't well, know. I mean, it's, it's odd. When you're a local restaurant, you have a lot more overhead and you can't eat the cost the way a chain yeah. does. But then it all costs the same now, is what I'm saying. So, like, why would you ever choose to go to the chain when the local costs the well, same because amount? now all those chain restaurants are trying to get greedy and, like, yeah. conserve all this profit. And they're not, like, keeping their prices low anymore or, or using that to pay their employees yeah. more. They're just siphoning it all to the top, not increasing it, their quality. Yeah, because it doesn't matter to them. Because, yeah, what like, do they care? Yeah. Fuck it. As long as they're... Oh, no, I died <laughs> from falling. <laughs> as long as their CEO is uh, getting a $20 million bonus, then uh, whatever. Yeah. Just interesting. Because I've been thinking about, like... Just, just that cycle of, of localness and then like will we keep going to these local restaurants and I've seen like where every local restaurant starts as one little place yeah and then they usually expand to a, a bigger store and then they'll open up a second place and they'll become a franchise you know and like a lot of these places like Olive Garden started that way sure. you know I mean McDonald's started that way yeah and so we could end up seeing that with some of our local stuff where it'll end up becoming ass over time it's possible where where it's like the inevitable corruption of the of the capitalist sort of uh like that's what you're encouraged to do is that as you get older you know you you start as a young promising chef who wants to open up his own restaurant you you trained under other people and so you start your own thing and then like you're really excited to make these dishes and make your art and do whatever and then you go oh well i'm bored of this one i'm gonna open up another one and i'm gonna open up another one and then at a certain point you go i'm tired of working i don't want to work anymore so I'm just going to, like, turn I'm it over managed. to other people. I'm going to take all the profits, and then I'm going to start a franchise. And, like, that's how all these places go. And we're going to kind of see that possibly start to happen with some of the local chains that we like, you know? I mean, it could. Like, it never stays on this mom-and-pop local level forever. At least that's kind of my theory, is that we're, we're at the start of another cycle of that happening, you know? It's possible. Who knows? Hard to say. It's just, it seems like an inevitability. Ah. I would like to imagine with a lot of the places that kind of emphasize, you know, lo using local ingredients, keeping money in the local economy. Yeah. The only way you can really expand beyond a certain level is to stop doing that. Like, yeah. there comes a point where you literally cannot continue to only consume locally. Exactly. And you have to start outsour outsourcing. So that's going to be your like your make or break point where you decide if you're going to become like big corporate or if you're going to stay small and keep like supporting the local economy yeah but i don't know which way it'll go you know and it's interesting i don't i i i, I, I do not know how the tides shall turn but shall we anyway uh, all of that from bonefish grow itself? yes <laughs> Fuck Bonefish Grill is the moral of the story. Yeah, uh, obviously. Oh, I've also been thinking a lot about uh about convenience stores. It's sort of how like there's there's no modern hipster option for a local 7-Eleven experience, you know? Like a, a locally branded convenience store. And then I started thinking about it and I'm like, well, we do have local convenience store chains. We have Tiny Giant. Yeah. And stuff like that. The problem is that those places are really ghetto and spooky for white people <laughs> yeah even though like i've shopped at them before and like i i had briefly tried to make a point where i was like you know what maybe i'll go to these smaller places because they're struggling more and like 7-eleven and wawa have kind of fucking taken over everything and you don't have any options and so you'll i could go to like tiny giant or something but the problem is that they don't have any selection yeah. Because those places are so destitute that, like... Yeah, they can't afford to, like, keep a huge selection like yeah, a 7-Eleven. They don't have a lot of stuff in availability, so you can't really rely on Because I like the, the Watergate 2 up the street. It's, it's really cool. 
because it's like you know immigrant owned and yeah. and nice funny dudes in there and it's like yeah i'd rather go here than like wawa and, and support this big chain and then it's like i guess an inevitability is that like where tiny giant is now is where the local chain goes to die and then the hipster local chain can take over and offer literally the same stuff but with a new package because it's like these places that have been around forever just they can't get the new income in to be able to like revamp themselves and clean up <laughs> where it's like the place is dirty as fuck because they're struggling you know they're they're hemorrhaging money probably well the market is so like bloated yeah. because there's a 7-eleven or a wawa everywhere on every corner so like to compete with that as a new business is really hard yeah well, I think a new business might be able to come in and do it. It's just that the old ones that are already stigmatized will never be able to, like... Oh, yeah, like Tiny to, Giant to come will back never be it. able... Unless they did, like, a massive rebranding. Yeah, so you have all these, like, dying gas station chains around here. And it's like, man, but it would be cool if there were, like, a super local convenience store gas station that you could go to and get your oat milk and your fucking, your hipster bullshit. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. I mean... Or get, like, locally sourced, you know, hot dogs or something at the <laughs> convenience store, like... There is a, like. a local market that has some stuff like that. Yeah, but it's not, like... Out towards Ghent. Convenient. <laughs> it is not convenient to get there. Yeah. God, those crows just make horrible noises. Yes. It's like... <laughs> They're horrifying. <laughs> it's like when you f let the VHS, like, finish and run too long, and it goes past <laughs> the, like, point of the VHS being over, and it converts back over to the TV and just screams at you, and just... And you're like... Bleh. I was asleep, but now I'm not. We're grinding. We're having fun. We gotta get them blood vials. Gotta we gotta, them gotta get them vials. bullets. I remember that this dude down here gives you four bullets when you kill him, so I have to go kill that guy, get blood vials, and then go kill the chair guy to get bullets. And that's the only way to grind. Luckily, we did update the game, so the loading times have been much better. I was gonna say, yeah, that, that seems like it's been much improved. I made sure we updated it. Nice. Oh, Jesus. Hi. Yeah. Rude. You mean. How dare you. It was a Disgusting. good way for me to get situated and maybe fight them dogs a little bit to uh, make sure I know how to play the game. Eh. Eh. See, this guy gives us all the bullets. Eh. 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 Anywho. Uh, what, Bonefish Grill? <laughs> Bonefish Grill. Where were we? We were talking about Bonefish Grill. I'm just curious if anyone else's region or country has restaurants uh, that are like that, like the nice version of the chain restaurants. Like it's not your, it's not your Applebee's. It's Bonefish Grill. Everything is way too fucking expensive for what it really is. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get your three dollar jalapeno poppers there. You know what I mean? Eh, eh. Buddy, you're missing. Your aim, it's off. Ah! <laughs> just so odd that we live in, like, a a seaside town, and it's so hard to get, like, good fish. <laughs> That's how it goes. Fresh fish, you know? you think we'd have ass loads of fresh fish everywhere. Oh, yeah, it's at the Asian market. No one's no one's going there. They're going to Bonefish Grill. And, Bonefish and Getting grill. whatever fucking crap they funnel in. Eh. We get, get him out of there. We I guess we also have uh, shitty doo doo water, so our fish might be ass. Uh, yeah, I don't think. I mean, we're not really known for our fish. We're known for crabs. Yeah, but not Hampton Roads. I feel like North Carolina is more of a crab spot, right? I mean, we got some crabs. We got us little doo doo crabs, right? We got yeah, we got little doo doo crabs. <laughs> We blue, don't have much crabs? in the way of, like, good fish. The good fish actually usually comes from the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they got the better water. Yeah. They don't have the doo-doo water. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling to remember if we already talked about some things on our last recording because it's been so long. I don't know. <laughs> like, did we talk about our New York trip? Did we? Did, I don't know. I can't no, recall. No, because we, we briefly talked about it on the live stream, I think. Oh, but we didn't we? we didn't really talk about it. Hmm. I mean, like, that's a Vic and Hope topic. Why would we talk about it here? Then no one will hear it. 
Well, the problem is now we're so far away from it that I'm like, uh... <laughs> what did we do in New York? Hmm. We had the big fancy omakase dinner, and, yeah. uh... I mean, we didn't really do much exciting in New York, you know? Yeah, I guess we just kind of For hung out. story purposes. I went to, we went to the Nintendo store, and I got, uh, two t-shirts and a hoodie. Because you're now, uh, such I'm, a fanboy. My entire wardrobe is Nintendo shirts all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Outfitted in all Nintendo everything. They just have comfy ass shirts. It's like fucking nobody's got the shirts like Nintendo does. Nice. Man, I uh I was gonna try and get Vic a PS5 for Christmas. Mm. And I've been hunting for a PS5 since June. And like I, I did everything that I could think to do, like follow the guys on Twitter who like tweet as soon as there's an update so that you can like try and get in line. I I subscribed to the pro GameStop membership. Like I did everything I fucking could. Mm -hmm. And I, you, it's impossible. You cannot get a PS5 right now unless like maybe you like sacrifice a child to if the best by gods. Had... If only I had known how early I needed to get in line when they had the one day where they had physical copies in store. But it turned out you had to show up at like four in the morning and get a voucher to come back when the store opened and claim your PS5. And I, I had just showed up like an hour before opening thinking I could get in the line, not knowing I needed to get a voucher way earlier. Hmm. If I had only known. <laughs> that was the only opportunity. Yeah. And uh, can't get us OLED Switch either. Because yep. those are impossible to get. Because they're all bought by bots. Like, it's yeah. insane, you they're, know? They're being, all being fucking scalped by scammers for, like, it, for a while, it was the PlayStation 5s were selling for, like, 900 to to $1,000 on, like, Walmart and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now they're up to, like, $3,000 because we're getting closer yeah. and closer to Christmas. And, you know, those rich parents are getting desperate. They got to get little Timmy a PS5 for Christmas. And, damn it, if I have to pay $4,000 for it, I'm going to do it. I need I need my baby boy to be happy on Christmas. It's just crazy because it feels like the kind of thing that needs to be regulated to where it's like, <laughs> like you capitalism, know, Victor. You know that uh, that like people aren't buying these. It's it's scalpers most yeah. of the time that, that are getting them. What does anyone care as long as they're making the money? Exactly, because like to Sony, they sold the PS5s. Yeah. You know, PS5s it doesn't really sell, matter. They, they don't care who gets them. Who cares that it's a nuts. bot buying 20 PS5s and scalping them? They made their money. Ugh. So, uh, instead we decided on, uh, an Oculus Quest 2. Yeah. So Vic will finally have a VR system, which I know he's been wanting Thank for many you. years. Yeah. It's just and been I got hard uh, to pull the trigger on it. I got real fucking spooked because I was like, okay, everyone's gonna be pivoting from trying to get Xboxes and PlayStations and Switches. And they're all going to start flooding into the VR market. And I'm not going to be able to get a fucking <laughs> Oculus Quest. So I bought one, like an idiot, ahead of Black Friday. And then on Black Friday, they were offering the, the $50 store credit. And I was like, damn it, What no. you didn't realize is that people would rather pay $5,000 for a PS5 than play VR. I'm sorry, you're a fucking idiot if you do that. Mm. You have more money than you have sense if you pay $5,000 for a PlayStation 5. I just really, I don't understand how they've dropped the ball so hard on VR so far, you know? Because, like, it is fucking fun as fuck, you know? Mm. But I guess it's just, like, they, there's no, like, like mainline big game appeal or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think a lot of people probably can't get over the, like, vertigo and, like, But it's also, it like, a, a, most people haven't even tried it, you know? I mean, yeah, a lot of... Because there's such a big, like, investment. Most people don't yeah. have a chance to casually get to try VR. I think you know, it's you because, like... You have to seek like, it out. Like, if Nintendo or Sony or Xbox put it out as, like, this is a new console. This is the VR console. People would probably get it. Because so far, there's never been a, like, a first-party dedicated VR console. Like, there's PSVR, but that was, like, an add-on that works for, like, a few games, you know? There there hasn't been, like, this is Nintendo VR. And then people will be like, oh, the new well, gaming Lado. console, it's VR. Well, that's an add-on. That's one game, you know? That's Everybody likes Nintendo Labo. Yeah. I always feel like with Nintendo, they, they put stuff out like Labo, and they're like, 
Nintendo Labo, this is the whole reason we made the Switch. This is the most important game. We designed the Joy-Cons for Nintendo Labo. Everything was building up to this, even though no one cares at all. Just like Wii Fit. It's like the Wii was designed for Wii Fit. <laughs> that is the intention of the Wii. That was their masterpiece. And yet... Everything else is just a toy. <laughs> Oh man, speaking of, how excited are you for the, the Buzz Lightyear standalone Pixar movie? Jesus fucking Christ. It's so real. He's a real guy. He did a real thing. He's a hero. How fucking disappointed would you have been as a kid if like, like, what if it was like Toy Story 1, Toy Story 2, and then this movie? How fucking well that never would have happened would be? because they wouldn't be capitalizing on the nostalgia of late twenty somethings who mm -hmm. grew up with Toy Story. Imagine there was no Buzz Lightyear cartoon. This was the first Buzz Lightyear property on his own, and you'd be like, and it's gonna be like a boring cry cry movie, like all the other <laughs> modern Pixar movies. Oh, he's a hero. You can't just be entertained. You have to cry for yes. some reason. It has to be like some well, ins I mean, inspirational bullshit. There are plenty of Pixar movies that have elements that like are emotional. Like Up has plenty of emotional yeah, but elements. What, what, does, what do people remember about Up? Why Duh. did Up become famous? Because of one five minute scene that makes everyone cry and then the rest of the movie is like, okay. But everyone remembers the cry scene and that's all they care about. Well, and the dog. No one, no one that's remembers That's not the dog. true. People no love the dog. He has his own show on Disney Plus, dude. That's because Disney Plus is desperate and they have nothing. Well, I don't disagree, but... <laughs> you don't make a show 15 years later and be like... Victor, he had puppies. Oh my god. Is that real? Yes, they really I'm not fucking... fucking kidding. Why? Because dog! Why? <laughs> But dog, cute. Everyone loved dog. We can still make money on dog. Let's give it an Oscar. <laughs> it's Pixar. Oscar. Uh, but, you know, credit where credit is due. I did see uh, the trailer for Seeing Red, which will be out next year. And that looks what actually that? pretty cute. That's the, the Red Panda movie. Oh, uh, I didn't see the trailer. Oh, you didn't see the trailer? Yeah, you didn't show it. It's actually pretty cute. Yeah. I was uh, quite surprised. Mm. It's basically, there's a... Uh, there's there's a girl and uh her family has this curse where when they become like emotional or like there's some sort of stress in their lives they turn into giant red pandas oh, so it's very like Ranma. uh very ronma yeah very ronma one half esque uh but it looks pretty fun i was like oh you know what nice. this is the first pixar movie uh, i've seen a trailer for in like five years where i was like yeah i I'd see that. Well, get fucked. I hope you're ready to cry, bitch. God, yeah. It's gonna definitely. be sad. Oh no, and then the her mom, mom dies. It's gonna die. <laughs> oh no. Hope you're ready to cry, you bitch. Can't just have a movie where we have fun. That would be a. That's not a real movie. Might have enough bullets and blood vials to fight Father G Gas Gaslight. Ga Father Gaslight. Gaslight girl boss. girl boss. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of movies, though, mm -hmm. we watched Arcane. That's not a movie. Yeah, that's not a fucking that's movie. A movie. <laughs> the League of Legends movie. classic. Oh, wrong. Oh, I got easy M and M's real quick. Oh Jesus Christ! Uh, yeah, we watched Arcane. Uh, wow, uh, uh, shockingly good. Just mm. shockingly, so much better than it deserves to be by any rights. I, uh, I don't know very much about League of Legends. I've obviously seen Jinx because the internet. Uh, but uh, Porn! <laughs> not even. I've mm. known people who cosplay Jinx. I've known porn that cosplay Jinx. There you go. Well, that's, <laughs> that's your experience, not mm. mine. Um, but yeah, not a League of Legends fan. Um don't know very much about it other than it has a toxic community and it yeah. eats your life but uh damn arcane was real good it was good i think it, we were hearing it was good we were seeing it was good uh it doesn't look good because netflix fucks up doing a trailer for literally anything um and it was it was good 
<laughs> oh, when you said it doesn't look good, I thought you meant that, like, literally no. the show doesn't look good. And I was like, but what? I mean, like, initially, like, you would not see a trailer for it oh, and think, yeah. this looks good. You, you wouldn't would think... see that trailer. But Netflix fucking sucks at cutting trailers. Yeah. They are the worst. They're literally fucking awful. Netflix can't cut a trailer to save their fucking lives. Mm. But, uh... I think Jinx is the, the missing link that helps me understand people who like Harley Quinn. Yeah. Now, the Harley, Harley Quinn HBO cartoon set, a, set aside yeah. from that, because I do like, like that Harley Quinn. Subversive to Harley Quinn. An original Harley Quinn is okay, you know? Yeah. She's cool, but then it's like... But like movie the Harley, Harley Quinn. Quinn from the movies, yeah. yeah. It's like oh, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. And with Jinx, it's like all right, I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I um, I especially love just like the kinetic way that they animate Jinx and the way that her like twin braids just like flip along behind her and create these like motion lines. I think it's so cool. Yeah, they did a great job. But it was like, very excellent. just the the way they bring the characters to life, and they all have such like unique movement, and like it feels like they are individuals who have their own way they move in the world. And you're like, damn, yeah. that's some great character building you got there. I love that. I like how within the plot she ends up becoming this character that's like outside of the narrative, kind of doing her own thing that like is very chaotic. It doesn't make any sense to anyone, you know. Mm. And because, she, uh, she she doesn't holds make this sense. like like she is the most powerful actor in the plot. <laughs> she has the power to tip the scales in either direction. You know? Yeah, and she's the chaotic element where it's like she could really come in and just left hook whatever anyone's doing because she doesn't really care about what's going on with them. Yeah, she's just totally wrapped up in her own shit. It's like I think the difference that like makes me understand Jinx. Is that, okay, obviously, you know, she has the trauma, but, like, her motivations come from, like, trying to hang on to her ties with her sister and mm -hmm. that, like, obsessive nature that can come from, like, hanging on too tightly to a person or the memories of a person and becoming, like, feeling like you have ownership over that person in, like, a very toxic, unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I get that, you know? Younger me. I, I was like that. I get you it. Were cheeks. That's that's very understandable. That's a relatable mm. character. And it's not good like, for you. It's not healthy, but I get it. I think universally every teenager who watches this show will fucking love it. It'll be their favorite thing of all time. Oh yeah. Like absolutely. It, it's going to fucking rock the minds of like every 13 really the 11 to 17 is like the perfect demographic for this. Yeah. It's just, it's just really great. I mean, all the characters are really great. Even the villains, like Silco is a, a great yeah. villain, aside from the creepy daddy vibes, but I guess that's part of what makes him a villain. Well, you know, it's <laughs> it's Jinx that brings out the creepy daddy vibes. Ooh, the creepy like, daddy vibes. She though. instigates <laughs> the, the creepy daddiness of it by being such a weird, clingy freak. <laughs> Just like, ah, uh, I don't... Ugh. Like, I do genuinely... Like, I don't think he wanted to fuck Jinx. I no. think he was sincerely a... a well, yeah. Like, thinks of her as my daughter. My it's daughter. Jinx that makes it very uncomfortable. Yeah. But it's also only uncomfortable because she's super hot. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it makes you think sexual things when she does weird sexual-ish actions. <laughs> This show certainly has no qualms about making everyone uh, as sexy as possible. Yeah, which is important to the character. You know, they it's when you're when you're basing your show off of like a few iconic character designs, you yeah. better nail the character designs, you know? Yep. Where it's like the the character design of Jinx is far transcends League of Legends, the source material. You know, that character is way more popular than the game. Yeah, at for least sure. In, in its prime. Ooh. Also, um, whoever was working on this show that has an obsession with drool, I fucking <laughs> see you, dude. You're not slick. There is yeah. way too much drool for what is appropriate in this show. There's, There's some drooly no shit. No need. No characters slobbering fucking constantly. All the time. <laughs> in situations where, like, you're crying and you're slobbering. Or, like, you're terrified and you're slobbering. And it's like, people don't drool as much. Stop! Stop it! Mm. There is... That is not 
not necessary. It did a great job with the the pacing of it and uh, having like the the similar plot thread, uh, like the A and B plot style of like an HBO drama, you know, mm -hmm. but done very well in an American cartoon. Yeah. That I thought they did good with. Blah. Yeah. Brain not functioning. Uh huh. Good show. Uh. <laughs> good. Was there a thought there? Or? No, not really. Oh, okay. It's not enough to elaborate on. Just like, yeah, this, this was pretty good. <laughs> There's I think a lot I of uh, have fallen down here, huh? Cool political intrigue, and you're like, neat. Yeah, yeah I like it, this. Good job with the. This is cool. Political elements. Do, 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 Jace do, 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 is a, a big fucking dumb himbo, and you're just like, God, is there a single thought Jace in your did, fucking I mean, dumb little head? Jace kind of fucking sucks. Like, <laughs> not gonna. He didn't really do anything to redeem himself, did he? I mean. He's kind of just fucking up to the very end, he and he's kind of a fucking prick. He made the gloves for V. Except she stole them, I and mean, he didn't even give them to her. Yeah, but like. <laughs> And right at the end, he's gonna do a big shitty betrayal, you know? Yeah, I mean, he sucks ass. Jace fucking sucks. Jace is the worst. But that's why he just gets to be manipulated by women who are hotter than him. Exactly. Get fucked. That's how it should be. He's just a dumb, If you're too stupid bitch. to know what's going on, then uh, that's what happens. Yep. Yeah, Jace, Jace was ass. Which is good, because yeah, all the great characters are, are women, and they're sincerely awesome and not just like lame girl bosses. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Jace the Himbo gets shit on constantly, and it's great. <laughs> he's uh, he's just there to uh, be used by the hot girls who yeah. are <laughs> taking the power. He's the classic failing I mean, upwards cool endlessly. Too, I yeah, enjoyed he was Victor's cool. character quite a bit. Yeah. It's waiting for the, the payoff with him, you know? Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. I'm sure we'll see. Also, like, this show, this show really is the, like, un-Castlevania. Yeah. This show that delivers on thing. everything that Castlevania could and should have been. It's gorgeous. The character designs are great. The voice acting is great. The writing is fucking excellent. The plot is, is totally awesome. It's like this show is everything that people who love Castlevania thinks Castlevania is. Yeah. Because it's still a super goofy, like anime, over the top, like big show. Yeah. But you, it's still like... You still are sold on it, and you just get that investment that Castlevania doesn't hook you with. <laughs> and Castlevania's fucking ugly. I mean, let's just be honest. Yes. It is not well animated. It doesn't look good. And, like, Castlevania has lots of cringe humor that's not funny, and characters that are trying to be charming, and they aren't suck, charming, bro. you know? You're gonna tell me that you're gonna put fucking Trevor Belmont against any of the characters in Arcane? Uh, yeah, all right, go ahead. Endless, like, tr attempts at character development dialogue that j just turn into these awful long conversations that go fucking nowhere. <laughs> like yeah all fucking right hate Castlevania so much. every fucking set piece in arcane gorgeous feels like you're living in a world it feels like people have been there and it's grungy and they live there and that is like their home there's not a single set piece in castlevania that feels like that yeah. not one I challenge you, if you're defending Castlevania in the comment section right now, fucking show me. Show me the set piece, any single set piece in Castlevania that comes close to anything in Arcane. I dare you. Go ahead. And like, with Arcane, it's consistency of like, it always looks good. It never really dips in like, animation and image quality, you know? Versus Castlevania, which has its peaks in deep, deep valleys. And the valleys are <laughs> much more prevalent than the peaks. Yeah. And then it's, it's like, like... Yeah, Castlevania has its little Sakuga moments, but, but most of the show is a fucking slideshow. Castlevania also has a lot of that Sakuga that's just, like, a lot of... Like, it's super, super extra without really communicating more information, you know? It's just kind of, like, super it's flashy. It's Sakuga for the sake of it. Yeah, not flash for the sake any... of flash purpose versus arcane has like very good 
choreography and it's it's down to earth and you can tell what's going on and it doesn't have to like pop off in unnecessarily big ways a lot of the time and then it does pop off oh, in big absolutely. ways absolutely and like, like it always feels like you know what's going on and Arcane it feels earned also has something i feel like i don't i i've either rarely seen or maybe never seen from another show which is a plethora of female characters just going full ham and beating the shit out of each other mm. but in fight scenes that are like really well choreographed and you always know like where everyone is and what's going on and you can feel like the impact of the fight that's actually happening it's not that like camera whipping around super close shots where you don't really know like who's who's swinging who's getting hit it's just like flashes and chaos it's just like damn it's so cool Mm, looks like uh, Beatrice is on her way over to pick oh. up the the show. Now, if there is um, one thing, if there is an Achilles heel to Arcane, yeah, what would you say it is? What would, what would you say it is? You clearly have something in mind. <laughs> I would say <laughs> the the fatal flaw in Arcane is Imagine Dragons. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, the the pop songs are fucking I wanna hot be digging your dog enemy. shit. It's like ah, I want to die. And it's something I'm I'm amazed I haven't seen anyone talking about because everyone just is praising the show to high heavens, and it's like yeah, it's really good. But also like, are we gonna talk about the awful fucking soundtrack? Especially when there's like. Like, the musical score is really good, you know? Yeah. Like, the background music is great most of the time, and then it kicks into this cringe-ass fucking pop song oh. that absolutely rips you out of the universe. So much Imagine Dragons. So much. You guys, you guys, Imagine Dragons is literally in the show. They're canonically a band in, like, the underground in an episode of this show. Imagine Dragons exist in this universe. They're making their shitty music yeah. in this universe. Send help! And they desperately try with moments like that to justify the pop music by being like, oh, this is what they're listening to in this world. You know? <laughs> It'll be like, oh, characters listening to on headphones, or they've there's a there's a radio in the room, and so they like try to yeah. incorporate it in these ways, where it's a was it diegetic sound? Yeah, is that diegetic. the word for it? Mm -hmm. Like they they try to make it like that, but it it just doesn't work for me. Like it it takes me out of the universe every time they play a song because it doesn't feel like it belongs. You know, right? It's like why would this American pop music be here? It's just so weird. It's so fucking. I bad. don't buy it. <laughs> it's so. Bad. Ah, uh, why Imagine Dragons? Like, why? Of all the bands, of all the bands you could have chosen, yeah. it had to be Imagine Dragons. Like, Gotta really? Be a, a record label thing or some shit. I guess. So annoying. Mm, God. Oh. Yeah. So that's my my big complaint. Too much Imagine Dragons. I would yeah. prefer no Imagine Dragons. I would prefer not to imagine any show. dragons. Yes, I would like zero imagination of dragons. <laughs> dragons, I'm not imagining them They're not ever. currently being imagined, nor will they ever in the future be imagined. <laughs> Banning them. I cannot imagine dragons. <laughs> yeah, when we were talking with B about it, it just devolved into a... The, the fuck making fun of fucking radioactive just being like <laughs> i'm breathing in i'm breathing out just oh, god yes. their music fucking sucks yes it's awful i hate imagine dragons all that to say but still go watch arcane because it is very good yes just you know pretend like it's not imagine dragons i guess that's what they want you to do yeah yeah all right well now that we've spoken positively about something that everybody loves yeah. Maybe it's time to speak critically about something that everybody loves. What did everybody love? The Dune. <laughs> oh, Dune. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's good. <laughs> I, I disagree. Hope didn't like Dune a lot. And I get it, I you know? Disagree. I get all of your criticisms. It's not like, because it's like, it's not like I loved it, you know? It was just like, oh, that was neat, because it's Dune, you know? <laughs> I just was it kind of boring. Don't yeah. think it's very interesting. The I guess soundtrack like, to is me it was awful. It was boring in that Game of Thrones way where it's like I'm I'm interested enough because it's executed very well that it keeps me you know 
it keeps me involved because the direction is good and the acting is good and the dialogue is well written. So it's like, all right, I am here and engaged. Well, I guess that's where we can agree to disagree. Yeah. Because I think the characters in Dune are pretty fucking trash. I didn't say the characters were good. <laughs> the characters are boring. I agree on this. They don't have any personality They're because it's fucking cardboard cutout It's a story cut out about a setting and not about characters. <laughs> And the problem is that I I cannot care about a movie that has an interesting setting and fucking boring characters. Yeah. Because if there's, if there's nothing interesting inhabiting your world, why the fuck would I care? Yeah. It's like, yeah, the concept, when someone describes the plot of Dune to me, it does sound interesting. But then when I watch this movie, I'm like, wow, I don't care. This is boring. And like the the castle siege scene where they take the city is really good. Like it was it was very well done um, as like a, a political takeover scene. Yeah, of like, but you like Kingdom of Heaven, so yeah. <laughs> Hope doesn't like political movies. I don't like movies. political movies where no one's interesting. Yeah. I'm sorry, Timothy That's Chalamet. Is, you know? He just kind of stands there and looks around the whole movie. It's just kind of like, oh, yep. well, I sure am here. Good thing I was born into an important family. It's Dune! And then the movie's soundtrack is like, <gasps> for three hours. Yeah, the soundtrack is not very good. Um, never been a fan of, it was a Hans, Hans Zimmer or whatever. Hans Zimmer. Fuck, can, all right, can I say it? Fuck Hans Zimmer. Yeah, he sucks. I don't like any of his fucking soundtracks. Fucking trash, They're all loud dude. and annoying. It's like, Fuck just Hans because Zimmer. your music's real loud doesn't mean it's fucking good, bro. All Come of it on. always sounds exactly the fucking same. It's just bus farts and, and blaring <laughs> bullshit. People like, just cream their pants over Hans Zimmer all the fucking time, and I don't care. I wonder if his true goal is just to make sure that the sound of his soundtrack bleeds into every other theater in the Cineplex. Yes. He it's needs every, every other, other theater to hear the remnants of his fucking music. What was it we were watching where all we could hear was dude? Um, shit, what did we go to see? Our, oh, uh, we were watching Last Night in Soho. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the background, all you hear is... Yep. Because it's so fucking loud. I mean, hey, uh... We got to watch it on the TV for free. <laughs> yeah, which is exactly how much I think you should pay to see Dune. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I got mm. to fall asleep in the latter half. Yup. And then when I woke half. up, I was like, like oh, everything, they're still everything here. After the, uh, hmm. Like the... The city taking was the logical point to end the movie, and then it just keeps going on for another hour. that's my real problem with this movie, is that it thinks it's Lord of the Rings, and it needs to be three hours yeah. long, and it really doesn't. It really doesn't. Which was do their one. goal, is to be a new Lord of the Rings trilogy. So it's like, okay, I expect the exact pacing of a Lord of the Rings movie, which is what you get, which is like, okay, the act has ended, and now the movie keeps going because there's no real climax because it's a book. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're picking apart a book. Oh, yeah. It's like the Fellowship of the Ring, where it's like, uh, what is the climax of the Fellowship of the Ring? Like the most exciting thing happens in the mountain. They fight the Bel Belrog. It's like, oh, that was that was sick. Now we're, what are we doing? Where where Taking what are we doing? Isengard. Oh, and then we get the one scene where all the orcs come in and they kill fucking Boromir or whatever, and you're like, yeah, okay, that's the end. All right. <laughs> kind of feels like we're just getting started here. Yeah. But, uh, we did see the new Edgar Wright movie last night in Soho. Yeah. How'd you like that? That was pretty good. It was pretty neat. It was pretty good. I would say, in many ways, it's very similar to Malignant. It has the same, like, yeah. vibe. If if anyone can understand what that means. Uh, un it's like <laughs> watching, a, watching a person become unhinged is the theme of uh, both of those movies. Yeah. 
now I'm like struggling to remember anything that happens last night. So <laughs> it's about the the, it's been a bit. I the know uh, it was rural about. fashion student who goes to uh, the big city to study and you know become a big designer, and she can see ghosts. Yeah. And then she starts getting visions of of this this lady, and she's like, "Oh no, bad things are happening to her," and the the line between dreams. reality and and her visions is blurs and woo spooky. Oh, no, but, uh, I didn't get the special attack. Shit. It's Edgar Wright, so I still recommend that you go see it. You know, because yeah. it's cool. It's, it's good. Neat. I mean, it's, you know, it's a really solid movie. <laughs> it's like just a, a good movie. It's you just know? a good movie. Wow. It's not the best movie you've ever seen. It's not a bad movie by any stretch. It's just a good movie. Yeah. Speaking of other... Sometimes movies just have to be good movies. Sometimes. Speaking of other good movies, we went and saw the new Wes Anderson joint yeah. with the best boy ever and Michelle. That, I would say, is a fantastic the movie. The French Dispatch, yeah. yes. I would say it's it's my favorite Wes Anderson movie thus far. Maybe. It is real good. It's very good. It's definitely the most Wes Anderson, Wes Anderson movie thus far. That's yeah. for sure. It's, it's peak Wes Anderson. It's just popping the fuck off at all times. It, it is an unrelenting onslaught of style. <laughs> it is an immaculate film. I do not hesitate to say. It is just so much going on visually uh, sto and story-wise at any point in time. I think I really appreciate the uh, the theming of the movie, which is just, uh, I, I think, Ennui, which is the name of the town that, you know, it Ennui. takes place in. Uh, but also is the theme of the movie, and I, I can appreciate that. We you know? got him. Nice. We got Thank Father Gaslight. Thank you, Wes Gas Anderson. Kauai you helped Iagni. us get Father Gaslight. Coagni. Coagni. Oh, we did we it. Fucking got him, boys. Return to the hunter's dream. <laughs> Why I shall. Your dream. Hunting for your dream. <laughs> That's your play every time that you uh, yes. go back to the dream. Uh. But, uh, go see it. It's good. Yeah, so many good things. It's real good! I remember back when I was capable of having a discussion about things. Yeah? <laughs> so long ago, I feel <laughs> untrained now. Well, um, we did just get back from the theater today as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you already forget? <laughs> oh, all right. Everything is exhausting. You out me. here too. I'm broken. Hmm. He oh, do be too. Fart. He do be fart. Oh, he's stanky. <laughs> oh no. What do I need? Endurance? Do I need strength? I, I love you, strength? but yeah. I need some skill. <laughs> you need some skill, all right. No, some, endurance. some skill filter out these stinky toots. Fart. I've I feel very <laughs> terrible today, and it's and I know why because it's yeah. Thanksgiving weekend, and mm. like we had one day of eating total trash then we had a second day of eating total trash mm -hmm. where i decided to drink some trash yeah and so now my body is trash it is filled with literal garbage but hey it's a holiday right am yeah. i right <laughs> calories don't count on the holiday mm. oh yeah i can buy these things holy shit oh Amazing. i can only buy 20 <laughs> Wait, She's trying to sit on the little circular uh, bag back there. She's yeah, fine. meow. Anyway, we went to see uh, Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Directed by the same man who did um, Forty Seven Meters Down. Great. Which is a shark movie. It's very um, awful. For those of you who who don't know. Oh, and Strangers Pray at Night, which uh, is also uh, so good. One. Such a great mm, I such I watched film. 47 Meters Down with you. You did? Yeah. yeah. That was I'll boring. admit, I love a cheesy shark movie. Um, not because they're good, but there's just something about shark movies that I find in inherently uh, entertaining. This is boring. <laughs> I don't know, so man. Stupid. I have that like sub mechanophobia of like just sharks, like just just the fucking fake sharks, man. It bu uh, it bugs me so bad. Mm. Like thinking about the Jaws ride <laughs> and thinking so about the mentally fucking traumatized mechanical the fucking sharks shark. under the water. No, I'm so uh, incredibly not afraid of sharks uh, that I don't care at all. It doesn't bother me if it's a real shark. It's the mechanical ones. <laughs> 
It's just like they're always there, dude. God. And they can they can malfunction. And they can shoot up and well, the, the problem with being afraid of any kind of shark is that it's like it's, just don't go in the water. Just don't yeah, go in the, the water. Mechanical sharks, sharks. You like, fall in, you're on the fucking jaws what? ride. Why did the shark kill you on the jaws ride? What if you fell in? Um, it's on a track and it can't get you. Yes, it's it on could. A fucking track. Oh, it's in the water. Oh, what if it's close to you? What if you touch it? Oh my god. Oh. I hate it. I fucking hate it. Nothing would happen if you touched it. But it would just be. But what a if it shark. did? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate like those behind the scenes Jaws photos oh of like god. the the dummy shark Bruce under the water. <gasps> <laughs> if it's out of the water, it's fine. If it's under the water, I'm just like, no, <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> You're very, very <laughs> silly. It's so bad. <laughs> uh, just it's the, it's how unnatural it is. It's the the fucking unnerving, unnatural nature of like a fake shark under. It's not. We put it there. Why? This is someone who. This is the fucking. Hope can look at like man. cadavers and dead shit and like fucked up animals that's in natural. jars. That's that's <laughs> that's just fucking, decomposition. That's how life works. Life doesn't shark. work with mechanical sharks underwater. That's not supposed to be there. <laughs> what? Oh, I hate it. Oh, you're very silly. Mm. But anyway, we went to see Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Uh, How'd you like it, Victor? It wasn't good. It certainly was not good. Um, it's just it's disappointing because it's not disappointing. It's exactly as bad as you know it's going to be. Yeah. And it's just like, couldn't they, like, it just doesn't <laughs> seem like it's that hard, you know? If they just even tried a little bit to write a Resident Evil movie, you know? Well, Why is it so fucking hard? I think what's frustrating about this movie is that it's very obvious that the director and the people involved in making it have played the original games. Like, they like, they at least pretend to like Resident Evil. They make references and jokes that you would only get if you've played the games like they make a jill sandwich joke they show the fucking burger uh from the the trucker yeah. so it's like clearly they have played the games and yet they choose to make these decisions that make no fucking sense they're just like all right we're gonna take the first three resident evil games we're gonna cram all of that into one two-hour movie and also, oh, it's a spooky guy. all of the characters are going to not be the characters that they are in the games. These guys are scary. Uh-oh, spooky men. They're so scary because they're just guys, you know? Really? I mean, it's just like Thanos. Just a guy. Oh, man, just a purple guy. These guys are freaky as hell. <laughs> really? Yeah, these, these I mean, are they're spooky, tall, dude. but... Aside from being tall. Oh, it's also that they will absolutely fuck you up. They get you. That's <laughs> part of what makes it spooky. Just like how you could uh, get spooked over here. If you stand there too long. You know about the guy there? See? Whoa. Oh. You Who know is what that, that is? It's one of the uh, the Cthulhu guys. Because they're existing on the, uh, the other plane of existence. So he's reaching through and grabbing you. And you can't see him because you're not a... Uh... Because you don't have the, the mat. Like, if you if you get enough uh, insanity points, then you can see him. Whoa. Because you're too sane right now to see to the spooky see through monster. The veil. Yeah. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. It's very cool. Um, but, yeah. So, I, I don't know why they chose to do the things they did in this movie. Um, I don't know why they made Leon into, like, a whoopee. I kind I I kind of liked that. Like that was the one thing I did like was Leon being a stupid, just a dumb little bitch. He <laughs> and, like he's never absolutely redeemed. Absolutely useless, <laughs> clueless, like just an idiot. And they make a point at the beginning of the movie to be like, 
to prove how much they pick on Leon and the police yeah. and the raccoon police department. And they just they never stop. Like they just rip They're on him the whole so movie. They're just so mean to him. And he's never like it's treated as if they are all correct in doing this. Like <laughs> That's true. No one ever goes, "Leave him alone. He's he's new." Yeah. They're just Everyone's like, always "Fuck just like, yeah, Leon." Fuck Leon. He fucking sucks. Which feels to me like Okay, the director hates Leon, you know? Like, the writer of the movie is a Resident Evil fan, and they think that Leon's overrated, and so they just wrote Leon to be the worst because everyone loves Leon. Like, like, that is what it feels like to me. The thing that's, like, the funniest to me is that, like, in the Paul W.S. Anderson movies, he refuses to cast an attractive-looking guy as Leon. Yeah. Refuses. In this movie, they cast a good-looking dude as Leon. So yeah. I'm like, well, I guess at least you got that right. I don't know. And then they just shit on and him the entire time. And then they dunk on him the whole movie until, like, the very end. But then some of the best scenes were, like, Leon being hilariously incompetent. <laughs> Unbelievably inept. Just and it was like, at least mess. those were funny scenes in this otherwise completely bland movie. It's, um, uh, it's interesting. Um, they, they, like, they cram Lisa Trevor into this movie, who is, like, a complete bit, like, background bit of lore from the original game. Like, she is a character that, like, follows you through the tunnels towards the end of the original game, but if you don't read, like, all of the lore that you pick up, you'd never know who she is. Yeah. So that means that, like, either someone told them about this or they played the games, like, thoroughly enough that they read a lot of the lore that they picked up as they went along to yeah. know who Lisa Trevor is. And the worst part is that they add this character... And they make a big deal about this character that was oh, not God. relevant at all. And then all the character serves, like, in the in the whole movie, like, she gets this whole opening scene with Claire where it's like, they, it turns out they were orphans in an umbrella orphanage. <laughs> and so they have to go out of their way to explain all this orphanage shit. And have all these backstory scenes where it's like she sees Lisa Trevor comes to her at night and is like, you're my friend. And friend. But no one believes her because she hides away. It's like, okay, who cares? Why? Why? And they have all these backstory scenes, and then it just, like, they end up back in the orphanage at the end of the movie, and, and, and Lisa saves them, and then just, like, gives them a key to go down a secret path, and that's it. That's all the character did. And then they just leave her. They're yeah. just like, all right, have fun dying when they nuke Raccoon City. Bye! It's like, why? Why did we need so much of this <laughs> Get character? Get bent, bro. Like, okay. Just a fucking... So, like, uh... honestly, though, like, Claire's backstory, Lisa Trevor, the whole orphanage, cut it. Cut all of it. Yeah. Cut all of it. Spend it, more time it wasn't in the, in the Raccoon game. City Police Department. <laughs> they build this whole beautiful set piece for the Raccoon City Police Department, just like you see it in the game, and they spend, like, maybe ten minutes in there? Yeah. It's like, come on, let me let me enjoy being in the police department. They build lots of beautiful set pieces for the Spencer Mansion. And they're like very well recreated. They're really th faithful to how they look in the game. You spend 10 minutes in there and then you're off doing the next thing. It's like, wh well, cut out all this other bullshit and let me, you know, explore the spaces that are from the games. I thought that was the whole reason you were making this movie. Like, you you want to sell this movie like it's for people who are really into the Resident Evil games. Like, it's for the fans. But then you treat the fans like they're fucking stupid by making Leon this fucking whoopee character and, like, making Lisa Trevor a good guy and it's so weird it's just like they want to lure you in with like yeah oh we understand Resident Evil fans haha <laughs> Jill Sandwich and then they're also like fuck you you dumb bitch I hope you enjoyed us shitting on your dumb game like yeah. um okay uh. and I'm like I understand from a Hollywood movie perspective like they 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 tried to go and start before the events of the games to try to like give you a little bit more about the characters and establish who they are because like in the games you you really don't know who the fuck any of these guys are or like what like they, they don't have very much character to them you know and i understand from a movie's perspective they want to try to make these more well-rounded characters because like what do you know about jill at resident evil one you don't know anything she's I just mean, a conduit for the plot to happen you know she's cool and she's hot yeah she's cool and hot and that's all that matters <laughs> but then it's like 
So they try to give some character development and establish the characters before things happen, but then they don't do anything with it. So it's, you still don't know anything about them by the end, except you know that they were orphans. Whoa. Uh, okay, cool. Cool. That didn't add anything. It didn't make anything more dramatic, you know? And they also, like, <laughs> they... The... The character that's supposed to be Barry is, like, totally different, and he gets murdered pretty, like, quickly. Mm. You're just like, uh, what? Uh, I'm so confused. There's so much stuff they could have done, too, because there's, like, there's the giant snake in the mansion. There's the fucking giant sharks in the basement yeah. of the mansion. There are so many cool things you could have done with the mansion, and yet you decided, no, I'm gonna just slam all of these characters together in the dollhouse of my 100 million dollar movie and uh and they're gonna get on a train and run away and and and, and they're gonna make it out also man the final the final monster super lame yeah fucking super lame. lame bro well it's lame. like the final monster of the games is always lame but like but it like, was really that one lame was, it was especially lame it kind of looks like a play on like the crocodile guys you know like the big snaky men i guess but like he's got weird. like a cow skull almost with like bright red eyes like led bright red eyes mm. and it's like it still has some remnants of uh of the monster that like Sherry's dad turns yeah. into, which is cool. You know, I like his eyeballs and stuff like that's neat. But like, why? Why that design? I don't understand. It's very odd. And then like the liquor that they have in this movie, which again, didn't even need to be in the movie. It didn't really do much. Well, except except from get murdered by Lisa Trevor. Yeah, that was super fucking oh weird. Oh my god, that was so it's lame. It's like, why are we having like the cripple monster like choke out a liquor and rip its head in half? Like, yeah. what the fuck? What she did I just fucking, watch? She takes her uh her like old timey wooden shackles and like shoves it into the liquor's mouth and like snaps its head in half. It's so like weird. what? Okay. And the problem with that for me is like they also like they go to great lengths to include the zombie dogs and the liquor. Mm -hmm. And my problem with that is that in the Paul W.S. Anderson movies, those monsters have already been done really well. Like the dogs from the original Resident Evil movie are really great. They took real Doberman and applied prosthetics onto them and applied gore onto them and they looked really cool. It's like, that's what it would look like in real life. And of course, in this movie, it's a CG nightmare. And it the fucking drool effects of the dog, like with the drool pouring out of its mouth, looks super cheap and super lame. So it's like, okay, well, I've already seen a better version of this. And this movie isn't, isn't even like very good so now i'm looking at a, a like worse version of the dog a, yeah. a version of the liquor that isn't any more impressive than the guess, version of the liquor from like the third paul ws anderson yeah. resident evil movie it's like what what am i what am i supposed to be looking at here the part of it that becomes disappointing is like they already did this adaptation and it was really bad and stupid they had a chance to redeem it, maybe. And then they just did the same thing again, but, like, not the same thing. It's kind of worse, you know? Because, like, yeah. the, the other movies at least tried to do their own spin on it that kind of... It went in a direction where it's like, okay, well, it just has nothing... Like, this is just to something totally different, It became, you know? yeah, a whole different beast. So then it's fine. Cause it's like, okay, I could just think of this as something completely different. But this one, like, tried to do the games and didn't do the games. Yeah, and then you just, you said, no, fuck that. Uh, fuck what the fans want. I'm gonna do what I want. Like, okay. Like, with the Paul W.S. Anderson movies, I at least get, I can respect that the man is like, I think my wife is super hot and I'm gonna write Resident Evil fan fiction about my super hot wife and I'm gonna mm -hmm. have my super hot wife star in my Hollywood Resident Evil fan fiction movies. All right, you had a vision? Fine. That, I can respect it. That's, I got you. This I don't know what this who is who is this for because yeah. Resident Evil fans aren't gonna like it. So who is it for? That's the biggest question. It's not for wife appreciators. It's not for Resident Evil fans. Who is it for? Wife appreciators. Like I don't get it. Yeah. 
But it's okay because it's gonna fucking flop anyway, so we won't have Absolutely. to worry about a sequel. It feels like a deliberate flop, you know? Like, let's just make it, sweep it under the rug, pretend like it didn't happen. Get, just get it out of the way. I mean, it is a Sony film, so yep. you know, track record, not great. Um, Maybe it's for international audiences, you know, just like pump it out, kick it over, kick it around the world. <laughs> I guess. See how that it does. Was, the other thing that was really weird about it is that like they chose to have it take place in like a fictional, like rural kind of indigent town full of like kind of redneck backwoods kind of people. Yeah. Like which somewhere in really Tennessee or something like that. So that when bad things start happening, they also have this like message that they're trying to put out that like the the poor are being taken advantage of by uh, Umbrella and they're being intentionally poisoned. And it feels like they're trying to make some sort of political statement, but you don't really know what. Yeah, but it it's so specific it. that you're kind of like, well, you must be trying to say something. Yeah. But what are you trying to say? I don't really know and then they don't really go into any detail of like what the outbreak was and why it happened and like yeah they sh they show the g virus in the vials and one character mentions the t virus and g virus and all he manages to get out is that they mutate your dna and then he yeah. gets killed because it's implied that like the virus seems to be in the water supply or something because all the people in the town get sick all at once and they were like getting sick over the course of several weeks and and then it's established that the the people in the police department got like some kind of uh, they antibodies. They don't even tell you what it is. Yeah, but it's all like very br briefly glossed over. But we don't get any conclusion to like why they did any of that. You know? Yeah. It's like, well, if you were just gonna nuke the city, why did you yeah. do that? It's like we didn't get an explanation <laughs> of like what they did wrong that caused the outbreak. <laughs> yeah, like what happened that made it so that you had to nuke this city? Because it seemed like you were having a really great time doing your human experiments up until a point. So what changed? Yeah. And then to have that be this added plot line and not resolve it, it's like, why? That that wasn't really what happened in the original, right? Uh, not really. And then, like, the way that they tried to, like, ground it in reality where they were like, oh, you can take this train out of the city to, uh, to Gatlin. And I'm like, is it, like, Gatlinburg, Tennessee? Like, what are you trying to, like, where do you, it's where are you trying odd. to get me to locate this in my mind? Because you're trying to tell me something, but, again, why? Why? <laughs> Yeah. Uh oh, slow poisoning. I Shit. think that's my thesis on this movie. Why? Fuck. Where's Just my why? Shit. Menu antidote. Um. But yeah. So it's it's not good. It's not a good movie. Yeah. It's just, it's sad. It's pretty it's pretty garbaggio. It's pretty trash. Very very lame. Um. But yeah, you know, hey, sometimes that's how it goes. And it just goes to show like the reason Resident Evil games start off in chaos is because that's where the plot becomes interesting. Yeah. If you start from Claire Redfield dicking around doing nothing, then it's going to be a boring fucking movie. But I think that's because this movie, like, it distinctly had that, oh, like, geez. Hollywood schmaltz. Mm. And I'm just like, why? I don't, I don't think anyone who likes Resident Evil wanted that. Like, we're happy if you stick us in media res and cool stuff is happening. You yeah. don't need to give me... Some Shit. backstory about how Chris and Claire were orphans and they were in the yeah. the fucking umbrella orphanage. It's and like, there's oh no payoff, God. you know. And then it's like the the evil scientist guy had like adopted them, and we don't really learn shit about well, him. He only adopts Chris. No, he adopted Claire too. No, she just ran they were away. Taking, no, they were taking her to experiment on her. They were gonna separate them. And then she broke away from And then there? she ran away. Okay. Yeah. Then, she got away from them. Because the doctor guy out. at the end is like, I should have experimented on you too. And I'm like, why why didn't he? Like He didn't experiment why? on Chris because he thought he would be a good pawn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Also, this movie is like weirdly amateurish at times. Like that scene where it yeah. was like it you're cutting between scenes and it's dark. Like it is dark. But there's well, a scene where, like, the quality of the image just dips dramatically. It becomes really noisy, which implies that they shot it too dark and had to, like, 
up like up and the, in post yeah. or like they had to crank the ISO while they were shooting because they didn't have any lighting going and it's like what like what Why? circumstance would cause this like this is a big movie and it's like I very can't imagine, noticeable like how they could possibly fuck that up and there were times when like I understand that balancing a couple sets of characters in different locations doing different things can be hard, but there were times, especially in like the Spencer Manor, where you would be following Wesker and Jill, and they would cut over to um, Chris and, and Barry, but like I wouldn't have realized that we switched over because it was yeah. so sudden and the scenery looked so similar. And then when I realized that like Chris was being attacked by a zombie, I was like, oh, are we? Oh, we're with Chris now. Okay. Oh, um, sure. And like when they're in the underground lab at the end, and like it's it's showing bad guy doing thing, and then like other bad guy comes in and stuff, and then like all of a sudden all the characters are there, and it's like, yeah, that was weird. Like why did? Yeah. And Jill will just come up out of like she'll just boop pop in. Just like, oh, time for Jill to be plot relevant. There it's she like, is. Huh, I didn't feel like I knew where they were going at all. <laughs> I also think they, like, don't do much to make Jill seem cool Shit. or relevant to the story at all. Yeah, they really don't. She, she really does She is around where, when it's convenient, and she doesn't really do much. And you're kind of like, okay, well, all right. And they're trying to make her, like, a... Badass, cool girl-ish, maybe, I guess. And then she's just, like, around. It's like, well, why couldn't we just have had normal Jill personality if she wasn't going to do anything? Right? You know? It's like, well, if it's not important to the story, why did we need to do this? Like she was one of the most different feeling characters. It's like the actress didn't look anything like the original character. Like, Cl Claire and Chris both feel like Claire and Chris because they are generic white people, you right. know? They feel appropriate. Leon at least like keeps the pretty boy energy of yeah, Leon. Yeah, like, as long as you stay in the pretty boy territory, I don't mind because that's that's half of Leon's character. But like yeah, what they Jill did with Jill, like, I don't who get it. Who is this? Like, it's like why? not only is she totally uninteresting, she like they're so weird. Ugh. The guy they chose for Wesker is also kind of a strange choice. Yeah, it was very odd. He just looks like a meathead. Yeah, it's just like, he just looks like some redneck dude who'd go to your high school, and then, like, you know, his peak in life was playing football at the high school. I mean, I he guess, went to community like, college. Wesker always did feel like a retcon character anyways, because he doesn't really do shit in the first game besides, like, betray you, right? Yeah, I mean, he does. And then he becomes a character, like, what, in Resident Evil 5 or something? It is pretty late in the game that it's unveiled that he's, like, the mastermind. Yeah. Uh, what I did think was very fucking funny is there's an after the credit sequence where, uh, so within the confines of the movie, you're led to believe that Wesker dies. Uh, but in the post credit sequence, he like wakes up in a body bag and he's like freaking out <laughs> and he's crawling around on the floor and, uh, Ada approaches him and she's like, oh, hey, bro, we brought you back to life, dog. But uh, there's some changes to your your body that we had to make to save you. And he's like, I can't see. My eyes aren't working. And she's like, oh, I forgot. Here, let me give you these. And she hands him like the iconic Wesker shades and he puts them on. It's so funny because he's like butt naked except for these silly ass sunglasses. And he's like leaning against a wall and he's like, oh, and she's like, all right. This is this is you now, dog. <laughs> like, it's really okay. silly. Mm. And then that felt like the old Resident Evil movies. <laughs> yeah, which I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised because this movie is executive produced by Paul W. S. Anderson. Yeah. So it's not like he's absent from the production of these movies. I don't know why this man has a fucking stranglehold on this franchise in the U.S. And but... just like anything Capcom related, like he's the guy. You That's know? true. He did yeah, the Monster Hunter. He's shit. the Monster Hunter guy. I just don't understand God, what Capcom is stuff? doing. Like, honestly. It's like someone at Capcom gets to be the executive on these decisions, and they just f fucking oh. suck, man. Yeah. Bad decisions, bro. Not good choices all around. So annoying. But, uh, hey, so yeah, not, not I mean, good. better than the Monster Hunter movie, right? Oh, uh, well, That movie yes. was fucking awful. I fucking hated the Monster Hunter movie. Because that one had nothing going on. I guess I will give this movie that I was never bored. Yeah, it's so not So that bored. is good. I like that. 
Because I was definitely bored during the Monster Hunter movie at times. Yeah. Um, so, not bored, which is good. However, will I ever need to see this movie again? No. Absolutely not. No, 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 I will not. So, eh. You dim some, you lose some, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Boink. Whoop. Poink is a very cool spot. Look at that big spooky uh, crucified thing. <laughs> oh, who that boy? And these guys are all spooky and they scream. See, look. Ah. It's all fucked up. Nice. That's a good boy right there. Stop yelling. See, they're all. Ugh. Yeah, they're uh, they're not too pleased. I need to. Uh... No, not heal. God, fuck. <laughs> I can never fucking get the controls down. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, oh, looks like uh, Digi Nay is uh, here. I'm coming. I'm going to throw some Molotovs. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's a lot of boys. Uh, oh, it's a lot of boys. We're doing a Vic and Hope. Uh, we recorded uh, oh my god, look at all the guys. Uh, well, me and you did a Bloodborne Let's Play. And now we're playing it again. Oh, you did Neo. That's what it was. Oh, god, yes. Never it was like 90 episodes. Fuck. Never <laughs> it's a million episodes of video. It's too hard. I mean, we could never beat it. Yeah. But Bloodborne will be totally beautiful. Well, I guess you've done it. Ah! <laughs> uh, slow, slowly but surely. I think it would literally take me five years to beat this game <laughs> in a Let's Play. We'll just give up. Like, this is how it goes now. Yeah. We just do a couple episodes and then we move and then on. We move on. <laughs> ah! It's, there's no stakes. It's fine. Uh, should I appear in your episode? Yeah, come know? join the Vic and oh, Hope. Yeah. The Vic and Hope. And you can be Tarbuck. here. Yeah, and say hello to Charbuck <laughs> Transom, yeah. the only person who watches this. Who do we got? We got Tarbuck. We got Black Blade. Yeah. Uh, thank you, the Tarbuck and Black Blade, for watching. Uh, <laughs> so I'll tell you the, the reason I'm here. It's because... The internet, the Cox Cable internet, they were supposed to come and give me Gigablast. 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 The Gigablast. The last Gigablast. That's just what they call their internet. I don't think there's like a lower yes, it's than... Off. Cox fucking sucks. It's, it's the, the worst. worst. Uh, we have like a pretty decent... We don't have the Gigablast, but we have like the next thing Dumb. Yeah, it's, closer uh, that's, to that. That's so... I don't... But it just it just fails. I don't know what I randomly. had at the the last place. I had Cox there also. I'm terrified to go with Verizon both because they're more expensive and from what I, I mean, you should they seem you to be option, terrible to but... deal with for people. Well, <laughs> well I was all told terrible. that both yeah. companies had FiOS here, and I was huh. like, I don't know how that's possible. There's no. It didn't list that sp terminology on the website. The highest internet they offer is Gigablast, which yeah. is like literally. Like 500 megabytes a second or something like that. And I was like, that sounds good. That sounds as good as I could possibly yeah, need. Um, like but ours is like 250, and that's supposed to be good enough, you know? Yeah, that's Mostly pretty good. Mostly is that it's possible to get good upload speeds. Th yeah. These are good speeds for American mid, you know, town. Yeah. Uh, so is what I mean to say. Obviously, if you're like in Korea or something, then these are the worst speeds you've ever the fuck heard out of. out of the water, yeah. Um, but so... Yeah, so they're supposed to come on the 15th at 8 to 10 a.m. I'm going to come. I'm going to come. And so they have this stuff. They're, they're, they really try to encourage you to use their internet help desk. They really don't want you to call. They want you to use the internet. Mm. And when you use it, then like they constantly have to switch you between different departments based on the subtleties of what you're asking for. But basically the problem I was having is that um, you only can access your cox account if you have acts like active service at your place right. so confusingly when i was trying to get updates on why my service hadn't come yet after a couple days then uh it would be like okay sign into your account to get this information but you can't sign into your account because you don't have an active 
uh, pipeline or whatever. So it was very confusing, and th I had to get them to update my address on my account via these help desks before I could actually access the account in any way. Um, and so finally, at some point, after just like enough times going through the internet thing and not really getting an answer as to why they haven't come and hook up the internet yet, I finally called some, some helplines. I redirected a few times and found they said, hey, um, yeah, we see where you had scheduled on the 15th, but there was no appointment made for your time because it wasn't available. I'm like, what the fuck yeah. does that mean? So That's why we offered you the appointment. You offered me an appointment that you then canceled, didn't reschedule, and didn't tell me about. Okay, can I schedule another one? Yeah, so our next available date is December 1st. And I was like, oh, that's two whole weeks after when I thought I'd be getting internet. The time I had allotted myself to download all of Full Metal Alchemist. Luckily, Full Metal Alchemist is, is on Netflix, both versions. Yeah. So I've been able to watch the show. But in order to actually have it and use it, I had to have you guys download it for me so I could come get it. Because <laughs> yeah. Anime Alphabet releases on the 4th of every month. And, um, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. And I was like, oh shit, I got to edit this in like a couple days. But, so uh, here's a question for you. Yes. <laughs> is there a cable in the house that would logically be the cable that you would plug into the internet box? Yeah. So, what you can probably do that we did mm. was buy your own modem and your own router. Right. Plug that cable into it. Call Cox and tell them to. Just all they have make to do is on. press a button. Yeah. All they do I, is press uh, a button and it turns it on. <laughs> I, you know, they they have the option for manual or for have a guy come. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't own a modem, which is the main reason I wouldn't have. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So but, we just went to Best Buy. I bought us a modem and a router, so I wouldn't have to like. It's like fifty bucks when you go to the. Yeah. But when you get it from Cox or whatever, they're leasing you the yeah, they the you router shit. and shit. Right. So like, you have to give it back eventually. It's true. And I was like, well, that's it's kind included of in stupid. your overall cost, anyways. Though. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, it's it's not any cheaper to have to go that buy your cheaper. Own. It's cheaper because they bundle it into the cost, which raises it up. So because we don't rent that stuff from them, our bill's a little bit lower. Yeah. Now, you might have to get theirs if you want the, the fucking gigablast. Yeah, I don't know what the requirements for that might that be. That could be one of the means. I just remember... Oh, I ended it back up here. What the fuck? It, I, I remember it not adding anything into the cost. When I, well, they, they'll get everything anyways, they can yeah, out of you. Because that's what we ended up doing. Well, uh, yeah, I thought it would be easy. Um, <laughs> Nothing is easy. So last, it's never easy. When they hooked it up at my last place... Uh, we ended up having an error because of the fact that I didn't realize that one of the light switches, when turned off, would turn off the, like, that whole side of the room, including oh the, the awesome. modem. So, like, it, it was very bizarre, and it was like, yeah, if you turn off this light switch, the internet dies. So we had just <laughs> taped over it. So that Whoa. It would stay Excellent. Perfect wiring. We, you could also maybe get a temporary Wi-Fi passport with SIM card and hook that up as a, as a mobile internet hotspot and use that. That is tedious, but doable. not impossible. But the point is, we, lived in Japan. we don't have to do none of that because you already downloaded Full Metal Alchemist yeah. for me. And that's Full why I'm just saying, saying if, this, if this turns into an even more prolonged struggle, as I'm sure it will. <laughs> oh, it can't be that a bad. A uh, um, I mean, yeah, if they don't come again, I will probably just be like, fuck it, I'm going to go buy a modem. I just don't want to have to do that. Uh, crack, 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 crack my bones. <laughs> uh, Why are your bones like this? Uh, I was also, I had forgotten, uh, planning to interview Hope about... Let's do it live. <laughs> Fuck it, we're doing it live. We, we can do that, but I need to have a light on so I can record it on my camera also. And then it'll it'll be in both <laughs> Digi Bros and I mean, uh, turn the light on. Oh god, this light is gonna be <sighs> It's fine. <laughs> oh. I mean it's awful. It's it? awful, yeah, that's what I meant. This yeah. is awful. <laughs> oh god, now I'm like uh, um, I can't even oh, see the game. Well, <laughs> 
Sorry, didn't see you. She's like, wait, no. why are can these you, people Can here? you, is there some way that you can halo yourself in Full Metal Alchemist merchandise? Uh. We have the blanket. I do have the blanket. All right, maybe uh, we should stop the, <laughs> this is let's stop the involved. let's play. All right, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the new uh, uh, Digi siblings reunion. <laughs> There's no uh, digi right involved the... anymore. It's, oh, it's you're right. the... Um, what, what do you go by on the internet now? Just Vic. <laughs> it's Vic, Vic and the Witch. And Hope, it's yeah. Vic and Tricks. Vic, Vic, and, Vic and the Golden Witch. Freestyle. But what about This Hope? is our rap Vic album. And Vic, and Hope, Vic and Hope and the Golden Pope. The Golden Pope. Vic, oh. and, what about... Vic and me and the Golden Wee. What about birds? <laughs> I'm good. Bird is also in there. You gotta put his name in there. Because it's bird in the, the hood. The Vic and Hope and the bird is <laughs> in the bees. Good. Vi- in There's the a line. bird in the bush. Yeah, There's a bird in my hand. hand. I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Vic and I'm Hope blood learn leaf. about the birds and the bees. And come Public along education with system has me. Us. And we'll smoke a bunch of weed. <laughs> We can get high in the forest, smoking all them trees. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, no. all right, we're done. I'm gonna stop it. This is probably a long episode. Bye. Uh, hour and.